this is amazing. Elliot Abrams. I remember Elliot Abrams. I, well, I, you know, I was wide awake during the Reagan administration in the 1980s. I mean, I, I was basically wide awake, you know, from like 1966 forward because, uh, because of the Vietnam War, 67, let's say. Um, and uh, Elliot Abrams was working for Ronald Reagan, and Reagan was taking the money illegally, by the way. Congress passed a law saying that the Reagan administration may not supply weapons or money to the Contras. Now, that was specifically in Nicaragua, but, but more broadly that they, we were not to be supporting right-wing guerrilla movements in South or Central America. And when Reagan was selling spare parts, military spare parts, to Iran, illegally, they did this in, in gratitude for their holding the American hostages until the moment that he was sworn in on January 20th, 1981. As he put his hand on the Bible, they released the hostages. That was the Iran part of the Iran-Contra deal. So then for the next six years, he was selling weapons to the, to the Ayatollah, Ronald Reagan, and his entire administration until he finally got busted for it. And then he was taking the money from selling those, illegally selling those weapons and using it to buy weapons here in the United States and ship them down, or ship money in some cases, down to Central America into Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, Guatemala and El Salvador and totally screwing up those countries. And there, were the, there was this death squad in El Salvador that we trained at Fort Benning, that we trained at the School of the Americas. And they, in 1982, there was the, it was called the El Mozote Ma Massacre, more than 800 civilians. This was in, in El Salvador. It was by the uh, At Atlacatl Atle Battalion. Forgive me, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. These were these government soldiers who had been trained by us and uh, New York Times reporter Raymond Bonner wrote about seeing, quote, the charred skulls and bones of dozens of bodies buried under burned out roofs, beams, and shattered tiles. He listed 733 names, mostly women and children and old people, that were murdered by this uh, death squad. Uh, we later learned that it was 811. His reporting, Bonner's reporting on this in the New York Times, led Elliot Abrams and others in the Reagan administration to conduct a smear campaign against Bonner, the reporter, and the New York Times that was so successful that the New York Times pulled him off the South American beat, or the Central American beat. And uh, he, this is what Bonner wrote in 2019, five, five, four years ago in the Atlantic. He wrote, quote, the Reagan administration, with Elliot Abrams as point man, routinely defended the Salvadoran government in the face of evidence that its regular army and allied right-wing death squads were operating with impunity, killing peasants, students, union leaders, and anyone considered anti-government or pro-guerrilla. Abrams went so far as to defend one of the death squad's most notorious leader, Rob Roberto de Aubusson, who was responsible for the murder of Archbishop Oscar Romero when he was saying mass in March of 1980. I remember that. That was the assassination that touched off the Civil War in El Salvador. Well, that guy, Elliot Abrams, who was the apologist for the death squad and participated in helping fund them, or it appears he participated, is the guy that Mitch McConnell wants to be on a bipartisan commission. And, and, and President Biden has uh, cycled the name through because Mitch McConnell put it up. It's wrong. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 202-808-9925. This is the Bipartisan Advisory Commission on Public Diplomacy. Elliot Abrams? Really? Call your senators and tell them to say no. This, this will die in the Senate.